defense expert questions the measurements that are being made by the officer. You can't challenge the equation, although some people try to. So you challenge the evidence. That's sort of the, the rule of thumb in reconstruction is, let the equations alone, challenge the evidence. It's a great quote. I love this quote. I could use this quote in probably a dozen cases that I, that I show. Don't be bullied out of your common sense. I have a prosecutor call me and ask me about this case. And he can't believe it, but he doesn't quite know why he can't believe it. He just, it doesn't sound right to him. I said, well, that's a good starting point. I mean, you're an intelligent guy. It doesn't sound right to you. It's common sense, right? He says, yeah. I said, well, that's why the jury won't believe it either. But he says to me, well, the reason I'm calling is because the expert on the other side has got a PhD in mechanical engineering. And my guy's just a cop. You know what I say to him? I said, I'd rather have the, the guy who's the cop. Because guess what? Your guy, first of all, isn't doing it for money. But second of all, here's the important thing. Your guy is the only thing between the jurors and bad guys. When they're in trouble, they don't call a freaking plumber. They don't call a doctor. They call the police. So they, in their heart of hearts, know that you're out there trying to do the right thing if you're a cop. So don't be embarrassed that your guy's a cop and he's a PhD. Here's the other thing you have in your advantage. This is all your guy does. That's all he does is reconstruct crashes. The other guy does like 5% of his work is reconstruction. He does house fires. He does electrical this. He does mechanical this. He does steam boilers that. He, He's all over the place because he's an engineer. He can just calculate anything. So I said, geez, your guy's in great. And your guy's local. I said, your guy's local. Your guy went to high school with the juror's sons. I mean, your guy's local. This guy's flying in. I mean, when you arrive from out of town, that may not be a good thing. I'm in Springfield, Mass., the western part of the state. For a total of 10 years, we got no, no road money because it went to the big dig in Boston because fraudulently they were over budget by like six billion dollars and people were taking money home in their pockets type of thing. So people in Western Mass don't like Boston very much. They just don't. I'm in a trial in Western Mass, this has to be five years ago, an expert from Boston testifying. There's a break. As the jurors are walking out, I'm sitting in the gallery, as the jurors are walking out, one says the other, that son of a bitch from Boston. <laughs> if he thinks we're gonna believe that shit, just like that, his emphasis was from Boston. I said, wow, this guy's at a real disadvantage here because he's from Boston. Okay? But that's a real advantage to your officer. He's local. He does, this is what he does. And you know you have the fee question available to you for the other expert, and your guy doesn't get that kind of money. So don't jump to that conclusion. Common sense sometimes wins out. So here's the case. Here's the case. The prosecutor's on the phone with me. He describes what the situation is. He says, single vehicle, goes into a yaw, goes off the road, hits a tree. Straightforward. I ask him, is it a yaw? Yeah. Can you confirm that it's a yaw? Yeah. You have a photograph of the striations? Yeah. Did your officer articulate in his report, rear tire on the outside? Yep. Did he do more than one calculation? Yep. Was the second speed lower than the first one? Yep. I mean, everything is, this is a critical speed yaw. Did he walk the scene, look for road defects? Yep, nothing. No. Any damage on the car from an impact? Like somebody come up behind this guy and bumped him in the corner? Yep, nothing, clean as can be. I said, I think you got yourself a critical speed yaw. What, what's the deal? Here's the deal. The expert on the other side was the instructor to the expert that the prosecutor has because the expert on the other side is a retired law enforcement. And he used to be the instructor who taught the now expert for the prosecutor. I said, well, what's wrong with that? I said, that just means that the other guy, when he's wrong, should have known better because he's an instructor. He didn't just make a mistake. He's a liar. He said, is it really that? I said, well, watch what the expert said. And honest to gosh, this is right from the report. This is what the expert said. He said, that is part of a big circle. That mark is part of a big circle. It is. That's how we consider it. It's part of a big circle. And as such, it has a radius. That's right, it does. And the goal of the investigator is to determine the radius. Cord middle ordinate. The evidence used by police 
included a 30-foot cord. It's part of a 2,100-foot circle. That's true. That's what it is. When you do the 30-foot cord and measure the middle ordinate and calculate the radius, the circumference of the circle that you've determined is 2,100 feet. Therefore, 30 feet is only 2% of the evidence. 30 feet is not 2% of the evidence. 30 feet is half of the yaw mark that was there. The circle isn't the evidence. Because if the evidence were the circle, the car would have gone off the road, around the circle, and back on the road, and just parallel to the road. It would have gone 360 degrees and been backward started. The circle isn't evidence. The circle is a mathematical model of the evidence. So he says, well, hell, they can't have a very good measurement because they only use 2% of the evidence. I say to myself, geez, does anybody believe this? That the, so I say to the prosecutor, how does that strike you? He says, well, it's garbage, right? I said, yeah, it is garbage. I said, why do you think the defense attorney is sort of going along with this? He said, well, I guess he thinks his expert will, will make people believe it. I said, well, how do you feel? He says, oh, I'll cross the guy. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Now watch what else the expert said. This is like so goofy that it's, it's almost fun. It's going to be fun to cross this guy. That, of course, is <laughs> Wolstein. An error of as little as four inches in the middle ordinate would produce a significant error in the speed. So I say to the prosecutor on the phone, what was the middle ordinate measurement? He said, seven inches. I say to myself, how could you make a four inch error in a seven inch measurement? Uh, not unless you're operating without glasses and trying to feel the tape with your fingers to read it. Uh, so I said to him, you have, a, you have a ruler there? Yeah. I said, get the ruler out and take a piece of paper and draw a straight line that's seven inches long. He said, why? I said, just draw the line, okay? He draws the line. We chit chat a little about, you know, this is just stupid. I said, now take the ruler and measure the line. He said, it's seven inches. I said, I told you to measure the line. He goes, it's seven inches. I said, geez, you didn't get three? You didn't get 11? He said, no, it's seven. And then he goes, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I'm going to do that in cross. I said, here's what I would do if I were you. I'd call the defense attorney in. I'd explain to the defense attorney that the 30 foot and the 2% and the 2100, that's not really a good argument. But then I'd show him that thing with the ruler and tell him, nobody's going to believe you can miss seven inches by four. And like a week later, he calls me, he says, we worked something out, we got to believe.